Well, we're going to kind of continue on what we was kind of preaching, but a little different. So go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. See, God has this week brought this prophecy out of me. You know what I mean? He lightened your eyes of what to preach that week. If you without without the Lord doing that, we're not preaching nothing. You got to preach God's message. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I can't just dig up a sermon. You've heard a preacher say, "Let me dig up a sermon." I got some sermons in my heart already. <clears throat> I had an experience one time. This preacher invited me to preach at his church. It's the only time the Lord told me not to go preach at a church. He said, don't go. I wanted to real bad, so I didn't tell that preacher all week. He done made all kinds of plans. You know, he's going to do this while I'm preaching and stuff like that. Come time, church, I was like, I'm sorry, Pastor, I caught him up on false. Can't do it. The Lord's not leading me to do it. He got so mad at me. I was like, what? He said, if you get an invitation and you don't come, you ain't getting another invitation. I'm like, what I don't say I'm Christian to me. Because <laughs> the Holy Spirit told me not to come. And I, I don't know if I, I just wasn't ready or what. The Lord told me not to come. That's the only time, as far as I know, the Lord told me not to go to church and preach. <coughs> to a church, a different one outside of where we go. And I was thinking to myself, man, if I invited somebody to, to preach and he told me the Lord told him not to do it, I would say, no problem. I said, I'll preach. I got, you know, the Lord I always got a sermon right there in my heart. I just get up there and start speaking. <laughs> and sometimes I say, okay, no problem. I sat down five minutes, God will tell me what to preach right here. I, I don't have to study everything I preach, you know what I mean? Which I, I study, if God's leading me in that week, I'll study in that. But sometimes God just give it to you straight, straight out of your mouth. It just comes right out of your heart, you know? And that's, we just got to wait on the Lord. And evidently that man didn't know nothing about that, you know what I mean? What a shame for to say that kind of stuff. <coughs> what a shame. But that's the way the world is. They don't know how to follow the Lord. He said, you can pick up this Bible and it say go anywhere. I said, I prayed about the Lord told me not to do it. He said, you can. He didn't believe in praying about speak just like you spoke in Rome. You're going to speak, you know, or go preach the gospel. God's speaking to you. You know what I mean? He didn't believe in that. I have to be led forth of the Spirit of God. I don't know about everybody else. But that's all the church is about, being led of God. You know, I cannot come up with a program. You see them with a program. Got a program. This is the program for today, y'all. I'm going to preach. Now, all of a sudden, we have TV back here, you know. And the scripture before I preach it is coming up on the scene, on the screen. I thought to myself, what are they, mind reading the pastor or something? <laughs> he presented it to them before he preached it. And they know what scripture to put up there. Y'all seen that? That ain't the Lord right there. <laughs> you know. Sometimes God will leave me and I'm thinking I'm fixing to preach out of John something. And God said, I don't want you to preach out. So I want you to preach about being born again. I was at a church not too long ago. I thought, oh, man, I thought I was going to preach this sermon, you know, God was giving me and speaking to me about. Right before the end, he said, no, I'll give you a scripture. He gave me John 3 about being born again. I done preached this church three, two times. This is my third time. But they put me on Facebook. And about 100 people was probably watching on that Facebook because they said the last time they did it, about 100 people watched. That was probably souls in that Facebook, live Facebook, whatever it is they was doing. They needed to be saved. You know what I mean? They needed to hear the message about salvation. So we got to let God tell us what to do, how to do, how to conduct the church. I prayed about it. I said, Lord, can I make Sunday school back up? Yep. Lord, can I do this? Yes. Let me know. When God don't want you to do something, he'll forbid you to do it. You won't have to second guess it. Paul the apostle, 
He prayed about it. And the Lord said, I forbid you to go down to the nation. Paul said, yes, sir. And God led him up another way. And then he said, I wanted to go to Bithynia, Lord. He said, I suffer you not to go. Paul went another way. Guess what? Later on, God let him go back to those places that he did it in. For a certain reason at certain times. But Paul followed the Lord. And I believe he went up to Bithynia, though it's not recorded, but some things that Brother Peter said led me to think that also. So we have to follow the Lord. He'll tell us what to do. And then when we get there, the Holy Spirit will be there. The Holy Spirit will be there. If you're speaking in the Lord like yesterday, my son-in-law said, he's at the table. I said, go ahead, son. I mean, go ahead and say the prayer. He said, no, you say it. And right when I started saying I could feel the Lord's presence in there. It wasn't a long prayer, but I could feel God's presence praying through me. When it's the Lord, you're going to feel His presence. When you get up and testify, you're going to feel His presence. When you get up and preach, you're going to feel His presence. If it ain't the Lord, you're not going to feel His presence. It's going to be dead. But God is the leader of this church. We're following the Holy Spirit. And like I told y'all, God is, there's nowhere in the Bible that says, have Sunday school. We have songs. We sing about two songs. And then we have prayer. We sing about two or three songs. And then the pastor preaches. You won't find that nowhere in the Bible. Where's that in the Bible? The Holy Spirit lets us know what to do in this church. The Holy Spirit told them how to build the temple on the mount. And, and to get that information, Moses had to risk his life and go up on the mountain. But now we can come boldly to the throne of grace and ask God, how do you want the order of service? And he puts it on our heart. Sing some song. Ask for prayer requests. And if God didn't want us to do it, he wouldn't be with us. And he would forbid us. Right? <coughs> it's like somebody come down here. When they come down here to pray, I'll come over there and pray with them if God, if they ask me. If they don't ask me, I will come. Because when I got saved, I didn't have nobody with me. I had the Holy Spirit with me. <laughs> and I didn't know nothing about praying hardly. And God saved me. He just put on. But if somebody says, Pray with me. And uh, Kevin did. He was wanting to get saved. Just everybody was out there. <coughs> he said, pray with me. I turned to him. I said, look, you got to pray with all your heart. You want to get saved. You can't just repeat after me and get saved. But he wanted me to pray with him. I got down and prayed with him. I want to follow the Holy Spirit. I want to be led of God. If God leads you, if somebody comes down here and God puts on your heart to come, come. Go down here and pray with them. You know what I mean? Let's just all make sure it's the Lord's will, though. I'm going to let God do the leading. You know? By the time we hit, well, I asked before we hit the door, but by the time we hit that door right there, let's let God lead us and everything. This is His house. You know what I mean? He'll let us know we won't be in the, we won't be in the wrong. He'll put it on our heart and move on us and let us know what to say and do. And if God is taking it to your heart to say something out loud, do it. I don't care if you interrupt me in the middle of the sermon. God put something on your heart. If God is speaking to you about going down the altar during the service, you do it. Obey God. If you don't, you're going to be ashamed. You follow the Lord. But there's no rules in the Bible that tells me how to conduct this service except for this one. <clears throat> y'all stay at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I think I told y'all to go there. Well, let's get flip over here to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Keep your finger on that chapter. I'm coming back. Verse, first verse. I could preach a thousand sermons out of this one verse. And I preached this several times. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost. That's all you need is the Holy Ghost to guide you through all truth. 
He'll let you know how you conduct yourself in the house of God, what to do. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I do want to point some things out. <clears throat> We talked on this just a little bit last week about eating in the sanctuary. My conscience tells me not to eat in the sanctuary. My wife, she wasn't thinking yesterday we was working on the back of the church and she had some snacks right there. I said, let's don't eat in the sanctuary. So we, I think we went to the nursery and we ate in the nursery. Okay. I got something in my conscience telling me, don't eat it. This is holy right here. We have a water bottle to clear our throats and everything. We're not going to sit down and eat. Now, my pastor preached that for years. And he prayed about it. And the Holy Ghost said, go ahead and eat in there. Because we was in a building that really wasn't a church. They had functions in that place. And we just rented it from them. So once, once a month, it was a church. And the rest of the time, they was drinking in there. They was having parties and weddings and everything in there. And sometimes we'd come in and smell like a brewery in there. They wouldn't clean up after themselves. We would just rent a building from them. So my pastor prayed about it. He said, this ain't a real church, really. It's a church when we come in. But he said, I'm gonna, we're going to have homecoming inside the sanctuary. And I believe that man of God was right about it. But this is a real church right here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm going to have it either in another building or another room or something. Or out there on the ground. You know what I mean? But I'm fixing to point some things out about this. About taking communion and about eating in the church and different things like that. <coughs> so let me just start reading and see what God brings out of us. Let's just go and start reading at verse 17. So said, Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. You've got to realize when he wrote the book of Corinthians that he was just getting on to them hot and heavy. They was real fleshly. Somebody reported that they was all out of order. And he believed it too. For the first of all, when ye come together to, in the church, I hear that there is division among you, and I partially believe it. For there must be also heresies among you. Notice that. So evidently somebody must have prophesied and said heresies are coming in this church one day. I thought about that. How did Paul know that? Somebody told him something. Probably maybe the Lord told him that. That they which are approved may be made manifest among you when ye come together under one place. This is not to eat the Lord's supper. He's saying y'all are coming together. Y'all are eating in the church and some of you ain't got no food and some of you got food. They was eating in the church, you know. And he, they was being sort of unfair about it. It says, For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper. And one is hungry and another is drunken. Notice that. One is hungry and another is drunken. If we're going to have a supper in this church or out on the ground, we're going to get enough for everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Our church really ain't big enough to have these problems. But this is a big church. I don't know if y'all ever looked up these churches on the internet. They still have the ruins of these churches. These were massive churches right here. Had probably thousands of people. And they probably clicked up. Clicking up is not right with the Lord. That means you got your own little group here. You got your own little group here. Y'all are making supper over here. These people are neglected. They're feeling ashamed because I ain't got no food. You know what I mean? And this was a problem. It says... Verse 22, what have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? Think about that. You know, if you if you have a little kid and all of a sudden everybody breaks out their candy in their pocket and you ain't got no candy, you're, you're like, in the old days, they'd be like, can I have a piece? You know, when I was growing up, buddy. <laughs> can I have a piece? They was ashamed. Same thing that was going on right here. It says, What have ye not house to eat and to drink in, or despise ye the church of God? And shame them that have not. 
What shall I say unto you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. He got his commandments from God. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. I believe that some of the apostles told him the information about the gospel. You know what I mean? About what went on. Brother Peter, he stayed 15 days with Peter. And I think he saw James or something like that. It filled him in a little bit about that. And the Lord also gave him some things also. It says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament, in my blood this do ye as often as ye drink of it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. So that ceremony right there, there's no commandment on what day that we have it. You won't find it in the Bible. He said, as often as you do it, do it and remember me, because you're showing forth the Lord's death till he comes. So we're supposed to have communion until the Lord comes. I got a little bit of conviction because I've never ate of the Lord's communion. I know Geraldine has. Have you ever ate communion? We ain't never ate communion in our church. My pastor always believed in it, but we was always too afraid to. He kept us feared because I'm fixing to show you why. Now, I believe that we should do this. I really do. But my point is, there's no commandment in the Bible that tells me when to do it. I know certain churches say, well, look in the book of Acts. They broke bread and they went house to house. So every time we come together, we got to eat bread. But we can dispute that because that could be breaking of God's word. And then Paul preached unto them. So we cannot really say that he's talking about taking communion. It didn't say communion. It said they broke bread and Paul preached to them. You know, see what I'm saying? So we don't know if that's preaching, the word, or communion. That could be disputed right there. Okay? So it says, for, all, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. And I think I honor God for that. You know what I mean? It says, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. That's why we fear. No kid's supposed to be partaker of this ceremony right here if they're not saved. No child of God that's not right with the Lord is supposed to eat of the communion. According to this scripture, it's very dangerous. So we have to be honest with God. It says, but let a man examine himself. So if we was to have this, what we would do is have a word of prayer. Think about our sin. Think about our life before we done it. And if we didn't think we was right with the Lord, we don't need to take this. <laughs> Very dangerous right here. So he says, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Think about that. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. That means they die. So this is a very dangerous thing. Though the Lord wants us to do it, we should have our hearts right so we can do this. And I believe that he's not talking about being perfect. He's talking about walking in the fear of God, loving the Lord. Yes, we got some problems, but we're trying to work those problems out. We're confessing them to God. No child of God's perfect. But if you're trying to walk in the light of the Lord's word, I believe you can take this communion right here. But I don't think it ought to be taken lightly. If there's a death sentence on it, I don't think this thing needs to be taken lightly. They ought to be, have fear put in from the pastor. Make sure. 
So one time I went to this church, and this pastor, he said, let's pray. He wanted to pray and think about our sins, confess them to God. But I still turned it down. I raised like that, you know. I feel afraid to take this, even though I'm trying to do God's will. And I was like, I can't. And at the end, he got offended at me a little bit, you know. He should have just went on and said, all right, no problem. I see what you're saying. And I try to tell him that, you know. But this is our choice. But we don't want to take this unworthily right here. <laughs> and no kids should be doing it if they're not saved. And nobody should be doing it if they're not saved. If they're vaccinated now, the will of God, you should not do this right here. This is for saints that are trying to live for the Lord. Not perfect, but they're trying to live for the Lord. They're walking in the fear of God. And I believe we're going to start that because I do have conviction. If you got conviction, that means God wants you to do it. I'm not going to say, well, we're going to do this every Sunday. God's commanded in the Bible because we see that the book of Acts says taking bread every time they preached. And then all of a sudden I'm making up a commandment of God. That's how people do. They make commandments up. You realize in the church the only commandments that he gave us is to live right? That's it. There's only one other commandment I know that he directly told us to do. And that's if our widows have labored faithfully for the Lord and they are desolate, they have no family to take care of them, that the church is supposed to help them and supply their needs. That's the only ordinance of the church that I have a direct commandment that I know. The rest of it was if he's going to be a bishop, live right. If he's going to be a deacon, live right. A deacon's wife and a pastor's wife and his children need to be in subjection. You see what I mean? That is the only commandment that he directly gave us by the Apostle Paul right there. But he didn't never say that this is the way you do it. Y'all realize he never commanded in the Bible that we're to have church on Sunday? You won't find it in there. But it's in my heart by the Holy Ghost the Lord said, this is the Lord's day. This is the day we're to worship. That's the Holy Ghost. But I cannot find a place in the Bible that commands me to come to church on Sunday. You can't find it. This is exactly what I'm talking about. The Holy Spirit tells you. He'll put it in your heart to go to church on Sunday. Amen. You ain't on church on Sunday and you know better, you'll feel bad the whole time. I remember one time, this is before I even got saved. I worked on Sunday. Very little did I work on Sunday. But I worked on Sunday. And I felt bad the whole time. I felt bad the whole time. Because God's ordained that day. That's Jesus' day right there. And that's the day we ought to worship. Now, we, if we worship on Sunday, that's just something we had. And guess what? If, God, if we pray about it and ask God to do it, He'll meet with us. I can worship the Lord seven days a week, 24-7. If, if I wanted to have church on Sunday, I'll pray about it. I mean, on Saturday, I'll pray about it. We'll have church on Saturday. <laughs> and he would be with us. If he didn't want me to do it, he would forbid me. Y'all see where I'm going with this? I cannot make up commandments in the Bible just because I'm not exactly like this church over here. That's the way they look at it. You know, y'all don't do stuff like our church. Well, tell me where it says it in the Bible that I should do it like that. I just follow the Holy Spirit, you know. <coughs> just dig it up. Just dig it up. Just look through that Bible and see if you can find it. Can't find it. <laughs> Ordinance of the church. The church should be painted red. We ought to have angelic uh, statues coming up. The curtains need to be made out of uh, white crimson or red crimson. That's how they did in the Old Testament. The ceiling fan needs gold sparkling on it. The 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Y'all see any of that in there? No. <laughs> no. I feel good about putting this sign up right here. I saw something in Deuteronomy. Write it upon a lintel post of your house. And I thought, man, somebody might criticize this. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Lord said it's okay. I'm following the Lord. Right there. He didn't even tell us about the pulpit. Y'all know that? These are the measurements of the pulpit of the New Testament church. Never did. 
<clears throat> now, I might ask him, Lord, how do you build one of these things? You know, when I, I do something, I start doing it, the Lord just lights my eyes. I have to put a big old beam across my 26 uh, foot beam across my living room. Termite's going to take the whole wall up. He showed me how to keep the wall up in place without, you know, the whole house falling down on me. He just kept showing me, kept showing me, kept showing me. Showed me what to do. <laughs> Even in natural things, you know. He'll show you how to handle every situation. And those things you can't handle, he'll take care of it. <laughs> I want to tell you, I, I about lost my house a few years back. I'm just going to say it without talking about mine. I about lost my house two years back. I did. All my equity was gone. I won't say it because God wanted to own back. I sold that sucker and property almost a hundred and forty thousand dollars off of it. God saw the future. Put that in my pocket tax free. Think about that. That was a hand of God. I thought I lost my house a long time ago. And the brother said, said to me so clearly, he said, God ain't going to let you lose that thing. <laughs> that was the Lord's speaking to him. Years later, here I sold the thing. I got $100,000. I wouldn't tell that just to anybody, but go on this year. <laughs> God works in mysterious ways. You know what I mean? <laughs> that might not be a lot of money to some folks, but that's a lot of money to me. <laughs> and I can hold on to it, not waste it, you know what I mean? We got to be careful. My wife has to watch over me too. I'd be trying to buy me the best saw I ever bought and the best of this, you know. <laughs> I bought me a steak yesterday at a restaurant. I bought me a steak yesterday at a restaurant. $23. Some people spend 80 something dollars for a steak. You know what I mean? I like to get those cheap ones from uh, what's the Food Depot? Yeah. Tail slab, you know? <laughs> it's about that skinny. <laughs> we just follow the Lord. He takes care of everything. You know what I mean? And that's what He wants the church to do. Follow Him. If you got a pastor that don't have the power of God on him, I'd leave. If I didn't feel something coming out of that pastor, I'd leave. I listen to these guys on the radio. They, they preach out the wrong Bible. But I believe some of them is saved and zealous about God's word. And you don't feel a lot of the power, but you feel some grace there. But then I, all of a sudden this other guy comes on, I can't feel nothing from him. Real famous preacher. I can't feel the Lord in him from a little. You know what I mean? It is crazy because his whole congregation following him. He ain't got the power of God on him. He's not even saved. Somebody says, how do you know? Because he ain't got the Spirit of God on him. That's how we know we're saved, by the Spirit of God that he gave us. That's what he says in 1 John. <laughs> I feel sorry for him. You know? I feel sorry for his congregation. He's a good man. Good guy, famous preacher too. Didn't feel nothing from the Lord. <clears throat> God's got to lead His children. He's got to lead His church. I want God to lead me, you know. And I, I tell God's spirit a mile away. I can't. I, I'm just going to get like my father out there. I feel it. You got to get like that too. Discerning in the spirit, the Bible says. That's one of the gifts of God. This is some good teaching, so I ain't going to say that we have to do communion every week or every month. We ain't got a certain day. I know other churches say, man, if you don't do that, you're going to hell. Y'all really realize there's churches that say that? You don't take communion, you're going to hell. If you go to, if you go to church on Sunday, you take the mark of the beast. Y'all ever heard that? I have. And they're dead serious when they say it to me. I'm like, Lord, that ain't scriptural. Holy Ghost ain't never told me nothing like that. If it's wrong to go to church on Sunday, why is God meeting with us? <laughs> What's that walking up and down in my soul right there? You know what I mean? <laughs> Who's moving on me? That's the Holy Ghost right there. You know? I try to follow the Lord. 
We might not be the most popular ones like on YouTube. We're not the most popular ones on YouTube. And I believe YouTube blocks us on some things and holds us back. They got that power to do that, you know. They'll put you down in a low bracket category, you know. You get to a screen with them, they'll block you off there. <laughs> they, those conservative radio people, they'll tell you, YouTube done threw me off. I have to go somewhere else because YouTube thought, threw them off. Being conservative, you know what I mean? They can throw me off all they want. That's fine. You know what I mean? They don't want the Lord, that's fine. <laughs> woo! 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 They don't want the Lord that's fine. He don't want to go where he's not wanted. You know what I mean? He wants to go where he's wanted. He, he can't do many miracles back right there because of their unbelief. You know? God wants to help him. This old world's getting more liberal, more liberal, more liberal. And liberalness just is getting farther and farther away from the God. It's plain and simple as that. Man can't live by bread only. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord shall man live. <laughs> when it's all said and done, they're going to die. And they're going to the awful place. Plain and simple as that. But we'll be standing when the world's on fire. Amen. Matter of fact, the fire will come out of us. People will be destroyed by the words of our mouth. And the second coming of the Son of Man. We're going to speak and they're going to melt. Before our eyes. That's what the Bible says. Their eye sockets are going to begin to melt right before our eyes. We're going to be going into the houses and climbing up the wall, the Bible says, and coming into the windows. We're going to be mighty soldiers of the Lord. There will be no restraint for us. Right there. And then he's going to destroy them with the word of his mouth. Right there. So, <coughs> you need to stay with the Lord. <laughs> You're saved, you will go out into the rapture of the church. You might be in the grave, but your body will come out of that, ra of that grave right there. The grave will bust open, and God will use those bones to make a new glorified body for you. And that's when those things that's in part will be done away for us right there. <clears throat> and then all the uh, gifts will cease then. There'll be no need for those anymore. <clears throat> but there's one scripture I wanted to point out. Verse 5 of this chapter. Wow, let's go. For every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. That tells you a woman can prophesy right there. Y'all see that? But a woman is supposed to have long hair. I would always say down at least where it looks kind of long. It don't have to be like the Pentecostal. They want it down to you. Never cut you. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to have all that. <clears throat> just to, just out of your hairline at least. You know what I'm saying? And I believe a man ought to have a hairline haircut there. Because it's a dishonor for a man to have long hair to preach the gospel. It's a, it's a dishonor for a long, uh, a long hair man to come and pray. What he said. Plain and simple. Said it in his Bible. I went to this church one time and they had a drummer back there that had long hair. Playing no drum. Boy, that struck my spirit when I saw that. Like the Holy Ghost just struck me. That ain't right. That looks ain't shameful up there. You know? But they probably thought, well, we want to encourage him. You know, like they'll put like the homosexuals. They'll let them control the music. I don't know if y'all ever noticed that. Due to the homosexuals, they'll let them control the music. Because they want to encourage them to stay in the house of the Lord. That ain't the way you do it. Now, there, there's rules and regulations on that. If you don't live right, you don't get in those positions. Even as a bishop, a pastor, or a Presbyterian is what they said. That means a, or a leader, an elder in the church. Right there. <coughs> but he says that we're supposed to have, and he talks about something in verse, verse 16, look at this. You got to realize something about Paul right here. He was trying to answer a question. And I believe the question was, should a woman wear a veil when she goes into the house of the Lord? Maybe in the Old Testament a woman wore a veil. 
and then through history women wear veils. But they was asking that question, I believe. And that's why verse 16 was. But if any man seemed to be contentious about this or argumentative, we have no such cousins, neither the churches of God. He said that, that this ain't God's will. We don't have no such cousin that a woman's supposed to wear a veil in the house of the Lord. That's what he said right there. He was answering the question. He said a woman has a natural cover. That's her hair. That's good enough for the New Testament. He said a woman has a natural cover. And a man is supposed to be hairline cut. Right there. Somebody said, well, Jesus had long hair. Jesus didn't have long hair. Those homosexual artists that painted that years ago, and the whole church world fell for it. The Bible says it's a shame for a man to have long hair. The Bible says Jesus never sinned. Think about that. Well, he didn't have no razor to shape. Yes, he did. Samson, years before Jesus come, thousands of years before Jesus come, they had a barber's razor. Called it a barber's razor. They had glasses, spectacles in the Bible. These people wasn't dumb in this Bible. God gave them wisdom. Right there. There's only one time that I know that God allowed a man to have long hair, and that's when he got on the Nazarite law, and he pulled it upon seven locks up so it wouldn't look like a woman. That stands for the seven spirits of the Lord. Right there. Samson did have long hair, but he said, the pin of my head, he pinned it up. He told his, that girl a lie and said, if you put these webs in my hair, take the pin, and there different things, I'd lose my strength. But he lied to her. He said, Samson, the Philistines be upon you. Next thing you know, he's coming unloose. But when they cut his hair, Delilah had enough sense to realize he could have told me all of his heart. Give me some scissors. He raises up like a four. He did not have no strength right there. You can lose your strength as a Christian. You don't lose your salvation. You lose your strength. You lose your fellowship right there. And you cannot perform God's duty to the Lord right there. <coughs> so, you know, I, God brought this back to my remember. If I can remember this right. Why, that's good. I was building something, me and my father-in-law was building something in jo on Jody Cole Road, a sign. And this man come up to us and said, he was so upset because the pastor done had an affair with his wife. Right there. And they pretty much, I think they tried to run that man off. You know what I mean? And I thought to myself, that pastor still preaching there, never repented over that. And they basically ran this man off. Do you think God's going to be there? If that man continues in that sin, do you think God's going to be there? I doubt the man was even saved in the first place, to tell you the truth. But he treated that man so bad and made everybody look down on that man. And, uh, and the pastor stole his wife. <laughs> if he was saved, he didn't have no more power. And he probably married that lady. I don't know for sure. You know what I mean? Probably married that lady. So pastors have to be careful. I, I don't believe in... That happened to me not too long ago. Uh, we was at something. Well, I didn't feel right when this person wanted me to follow them. They wasn't trying nothing, but this person wanted me to go somewhere and help tote something. We was at a function. My wife was there. And I was wanting to say, Jill, come over here. You know what I mean? I don't want to go over there. I don't want nobody accusing me of that. You know what I mean? The devil's strong. That was, you know, nothing happened. That girl was respectful. We all know her. But I thought, man, a pastor don't need to go around the corner with a strange woman. Well, she wasn't strange. We knew her, but still. I ain't going to have an office back here, and all of a sudden, somebody comes back there and wants to talk to me. I'm going to say, Wait a minute. Uh, Jill, come here. My wife has to be in every meeting. Now come on in. That's, that's how, uh, what's his name, that little famous preacher that died not too long ago. Real honorable preacher. Billy Graham. That's what he did for years. 
he wouldn't be in the, along with a woman. You know what I mean? Especially in the ministry. But you want your wife there. <laughs> or you want somebody to come in and witness this thing. You know what I mean? We have to be careful of that. The devil's strong. But we can lose our power. You don't watch. We can lose our power like Samson did. I don't know how I got on all that, but I did. But y'all go back and read this chapter right here. This is Paul mentioned long hair and short hair because they asked the question, I believe, about should we wear a veil? And you know, when I come in the house of the Lord, if I had me a hat on, I'd take it off before I go in the house of the Lord. A man ain't supposed to wear it. Now, a woman, she come in here with a hat on, that's fine. You know what I mean? But if I come through that door, I'm taking my hat off. Have you ever seen somebody take their hat off when they come in the house of the Lord? Or when you pray, a man prays over their food, you, you take that hat off and go to prayer. You know, I'm not going to come in here with a cowboy hat on and preach the gospel to you. <laughs> well, I've been in there with them. Y'all think, man, this guy blew me. <laughs> I'm going to take my hat off. I don't wear a hat very much except they make me at work. I have to wear a hard hat. Sometimes I'll put on a ball cap, but it just can't, it don't stay with me. It's kind of like keeping up with a pair of uh, reading glasses. My wife always gives me a new pair because I can't keep up with them enough for nothing. And that's how it is with me with a hat. I'll get me a hat. Think, I'm going to start wearing this hat. They say, you know, it's back there somewhere and I lost it. Fell off the truck or whatever. <coughs> my wife's cousin got killed running after his hat. He was drunk as a bicycle and his brother was driving. And he was like 20, 21 years old. Forest Park. And he was standing on the back of the pickup truck and his hat fell off. And he hit the hood. Hey man, my hat! And his brother was somehow lost control or slammed on brakes. And his brother come flying like Superman out of that thing. He hit a telephone pole. His whole side of his face was crushed in after that. You know. We don't know when we're going to die. These young folks better be ready to die. They better be saved. And <laughs> we all. I know we're saved, but I'm just saying. Whoever ain't saved better make sure. Somebody says, I'm not sure. I think I'd make sure for the night went through if I'm sure I'm saved or not. <laughs> if I'm not sure. Knowing what we know, what we've been under, you know what I mean? We've been under the truth with the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I want to make sure of that. But I'm already sure. I'm, I'm woo, 100% popular. 110 percent. <laughs> that brought something to my remembrance. I pray about Lord, forgive me for not giving 10 percent. I, I don't believe you have to get 10 percent. That's not a New Testament thing. Well, I still have a little bit of conviction. 10 percent to the Lord, right? I said, Lord, I said, forgive me for not giving 10 percent, but Lord, forgive me for not giving 110 percent. Of myself. That's more important than money in my pocket. Amen. You know what I mean? That's why I tell God all the time. But you can't find it in the New Testament says give 10%. You can't find it. And you know, like I told y'all before, that pastors, they preach out of Malachi, I think it is, if I'm not mistaken. They try to make it really feel real bad about that. I never preach a sermon like that. Huh. They want you to make you feel bad because. Some people think they're justified by giving their money. My grandmama thought she was justified by giving money. She said, I was talking to her, you know, and she said, Brother, I, I give my money to the church. I help people out. I said, that's good, but that ain't going to justify you. That's the only commandment you keep? That's what I felt like telling her. She's going to use that? That was her only leg to stand on. That's why she said it. Other than that, she was a cussing grandmama. <laughs> Both my grandma was cussing grandma. She, they cussed us out at the building. My grandma was cussed me out good for it. And I cussed back at her when I was a kid. <laughs> no discipline, you know, in the house. And I cussed back at her. Boy, and I felt bad about that. Years later, I was like, man, I wish I never did that. And I thank God for forgiving me. And if I would have thought right, I'd ask her, Grandmama, I know I was unsaved when that happened, but I, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? When you're a kid, you don't get no discipline. You don't get your fanny tore up. You be cussing your grandma. <laughs> I hit my dad upside the head one time. 
he hit me right back. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> That's how my dad was, right? I called the police on him. My granddad come in and said, boy, you should never hit your daddy like that. I've seen my dad do some pretty stuff, pretty rough stuff, you know what I mean? And uh, my dad, he wasn't a regular dad. He, he was like one of the boys, you know what I mean? We just fight together and <laughs> all kinds of things together. I ain't even going to mention it all. So I didn't really kind of look at him as dad like, like obeying your father type deal. But he was my dad, you know what I mean? But I never respected him totally as that because we, he never did live like that. He was like one of the boys right there. Just like us. <laughs> so I hit him upside the head. He hit me right back upside the head, you know. I called police. My, my dad was, my granddad was ex cop. He said everything he knew. You do that nowadays, they come down. They go pop somebody up. And my granddad talked about it, you know. I shouldn't have hit him upside the head. That ain't the first grown man I hit upside the head. When I was a little kid, my mom's boyfriend, he kept tickling me and, and aggravating me. I picked up a broom handle and knocked him upside the head with it. That's just how I was. And guess what he did to me? He had a Budweiser in his hand, and he threw that Budweiser half full right at me, and he hit me just like that. I, my face swelled up just like that. But before I know it, I, well, I picked up a rock and hit somebody with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Picked up all kinds of stuff. I, I think I racked Billy one time when I was using the bathroom. He wouldn't. You remember that, Billy? When his kids. He kept sweeping my cup. I said, you better leave that cup alone. Bam! I come off. <laughs> That's Billy's weakness, y'all ever want to know. You get hit between the legs, you're going down. <laughs> he got me back, though. What did I do to you that time, Billy? Um, we was over the office. Oh, yeah. And you sailed me across the room. <laughs> I know he didn't want to do that. But I did bust a big old picture with glass all over him. I tried to hit him in the head, but he blocked it with his hand. You know. <laughs> well, we was wild. Got BB guns for Christmas. We shot all the windows out the bottom downstairs. Never replaced them. They probably still got them. Well, they probably fixed it by now, but we never fixed it. We got. <laughs> Probably so. One of them smoked the last one or something. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no telling. We didn't have no business. We was them country boys that you see. Have you ever watched that movie? Uh, what's that movie? Where the mama died and, and they let the rich lady come and be their mama? Come on, you know. They was in on the boat. He was the carpenter. Yeah, old boy. We was just like those kids right there. We growing up. When we come in, my mama come in the morning. We pour a whole thing of coffee, a whole can of coffee out on the thing. We were destructive, boy. No discipline. One day they left us at the house by ourselves. We almost blew the house up. We done hit a gas pipe. You remember that, Billy? <laughs> Had to call the neighbors. I know that was the Lord. The neighbors come over there and cut that off. One little spark, what a house would have went up. Right like there. God watched over us. Thank God for that. <clears throat> but we appreciate what God gave us today. Just go back and study this Bible for yourself. Stay with the Bible regardless of what man says. You know what I mean? Most people are following man. Most people are following commentaries, books. I tell y'all that over and over again. So you get your Bible out for yourself and learn it for yourself. God don't want us to be ignorant of his word. It's the commandment of Paul the Apostle. He said, be wise with the wisdom which is from above. Paul the Apostle said that right there. And that's so true. We need that. Right there. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer today. <clears throat> if everybody would bow their head. Geraldine, you want to come up here and sing a song for us?
sacrifice that was given, then forever my soul would be lost. Oh, had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary, had it not been for that He was willing to drink his bitter cup. Although he cried, Father, let it pass from me. I'm so glad he didn't call heaven's angels. But he bore the rusty nails that tortured me. Oh, had it not been for blaze call my cow. Had it not been for that old rugged cross, had it not been for a man called Jesus, then forever my soul would be lost. I don't know if y'all, when y'all was praying, when you heard somebody singing that gospel song, softens your heart up. You can pray with your heart. Lord. I felt that when I was down there. That's what songs are for, is to open up our heart, to rebuke the devil out of our mind, and take the distraction away. I didn't know what I was all that. I I that was good. I believe